Hey guys, it's been a while, but I'm back here with another painting tutorial. For those of you that have been around for a while, thanks for sticking with me. And for the newcomers to the channel, welcome aboard. Today, I got something special. I'm going to paint a Gav Occupier tank from Star Wars Legion. So, let's get back to it. It's been a while, and I'm itching to get back to the table. For those of you that have stuck with me for a while, I appreciate it and look forward to more content coming more regularly. For those new to the channel, welcome aboard. I try and offer easier painting tips and tutorials for beginner painters and even some more advanced techniques to help those of you on the ground floor improve your skills. So without further ado, let's get back to it. I've been itching to get back to the paint table. Let's go. The Gav Occupier Tank is a heavy support vehicle for Star Wars Legion. It's an incredible model with great detail and comes from the movie Rogue One. Being a hard plastic model in a larger vehicle, there's not much cleanup to be done. Either way, look for visible mold line signs or imperfections in the plastic. Most commonly, on the front, there's these little chips here that need to be sanded down. After all of your cleanup is done, it's time to assemble the model. For this, I use a super glued gel. I start by gluing the tracks to the bottom of the tank. After that, I begin the sub-assemblies by cleaning the guns and gluing them to their mounts. On this model, you could choose to have the hatches open, exposing the stormtroopers inside, or you could choose to close them up. For this, I'll add a small drop of glue to each side of the latch and glue them in place, and leaving the top one partially open for a cool effect. You can see here, when I drive fit the model, I chose to pose the stormtrooper as if he's pointing off in the distance while keeping the gun mounted next to him. After that, I take the stormtroopers and using double-sided tape and a cork, mount them separately to make them easier to paint. After you've got all your models prepped, it's time to prime them. For this, I use a matte black primer. It's just a Rust-Oleum 2x flat black that you can find at your local hardware store. Nothing special. Once the primer is dried, I begin a stippling technique, and for this, I use an old beat-up dry brush, and I use German Grey. I load the brush up with paint and begin stippling all over the entire model. Now you don't need 100% coverage here, but you want to cover most of it. Don't worry about getting paint deep into every nook and cranny, as this will help out a shadow due to the black primer. Allow the initial base coat to dry, and then I mix in some green. For this, I use a darker green by Vallejo called Refractive Green. I then begin the stippling process over again. Once again, I'm not coating the entire model 100%. I'm letting some of the base color poke through. Here, you can see the blend between the German gray and the green that I've achieved. Next, I took the color Gunmetal Gray from Viejo and began to dry wash the model. Remove the majority of the paint from your brush, and in an up and down motion, hitting the high spots, you begin to get a metallic look. Here's what the tank looked like after I was done. It's got a very subtle metallic effect, and for me this wasn't enough, so now I'm going to take it one step further. For this, you can use an extremely metallic paint, such as the one I used called Iron Hand Steel, or another similar color called Lead Belt Shirt. Remove the majority of the paint from your brush and begin dry brushing again.
Here you can see the difference in the half of the model that I dry brushed versus the half that I did not. You can see the half that has the metallic look has a bit more realistic look to it. And here is the tank complete. After we've got the base coat and the metallic weathering down, it's time to add a little bit of rust. And for this, I use Typhus Corrosion. This is a textured paint from Citadel, and as you can see here, it's got a little bit of grit itself in the paint. When it dries, it'll give it a rust type effect. For this, find the low spots and the nooks and crannies in which you'd expect paint to be chipped and rust and water to pool. So here, I pick a little corner and fill it in, and you'll see I also put it along the bottom side of the tank, where the metal and paint would be worn. Be sure not to paint in any particular pattern here. Water will rust metal wherever it finds the easiest place to oxidize it, so it will be sporadic and random, and your tank should be as well. Try to stick to low spots or corners. Again, just picture where the water would puddle or pool on the tank and dab some corrosion into it. For this step, your personal taste comes into play. You can add as much or as little rust as you want. Now while we wait for the corrosion to dry, it's time to paint the guns. For this, we'll use that same iron hand steel color I used before. We'll paint the two small guns along with the two big auxiliary guns we have set to the side. After the corrosion has fully dried, we'll use this rust-colored wash from Vallejo. For the wash, I try to paint the centermost spot of the rust spot. I don't want to paint the entire thing, as I want it to look like the rust has changed colors from the center of it, corroding a little bit more, and the edges of it corroding just a little bit less. When this dries, it'll give it a nice, subtle blend which makes it look a little more realistic instead of the stark contrast between the fresh paint and the fresh rust you just put onto it. You can see here how I don't take the wash all the way out to the edges, creating that blend. While we've got this rust wash already in our brush, let's begin to paint the tips of the guns. This is going to give the guns an oxidizing effect when we add other colors. Over time, the heat going through these guns would change the metal to an orange and purple hue. So for this, we add purple to our brush now and remove most of it. Then, dry brush the tips, blending it in with the orange area to our liking. Ensure at this point that the orange wash is completely dry before you do the purple dry brushing. Otherwise, you're just going to blend it into a brown mess. Once you're satisfied and your guns are completely dry, you can then glue them in place, ensuring that they point the direction that you want. If you want them to swivel, don't glue them and just press fit them in.
Once fully dried, I'll now add a coat of Nulm Oil all over the guns to create a little more depth and dirty them up a little bit. Here's how the tank looks after everything's done. It's a quick and easy effect that makes it look battle-worn and somewhat like the movies. Next, let's paint the cargo. In this case, the Kyber Crystal crates. These are loaded on the back of the tank and have an orangish color to them. We'll start out by taking orange-brown from Vallejo and in a dry brushing type motion, heavily coat each piece. I try to keep the paint kind of dry here so that way it doesn't seep into the deep crevices, completely painting everything. After that, I switch to light orange by Vallejo and do another dry brush coat over it. After they've had time to fully dry, I take that rust wash we were using and fully coat the crates. Be careful not to let it pool or settle in any unnatural spots. You want it to sink into the cracks and crevices, but you don't want it to pool up on a flat face. Doing so will create a coffee stain effect. All you need to do is just use your brush to soak up some of the extra wash and put it where you need it. quick and easy crates for your tank. Now you can choose whether or not you want to glue the crates into your tank. You may want to leave it loose to throw an e-web into the back. Now we need some crew members. How do you want to paint up these stormtroopers? I've got a video just for that. Link in the top right. It's one of my first videos, but one of my most popular. A quick and easy way to paint some sexy stormtroopers. Glue in the crew and your gap tank is complete. How do you paint the gun, you might say? Easy. Base coat it black and dry brush some metallic over it. Want to take this tank to the next level? Slap it on a sexy base. Don't worry, I have videos for that as well. Quick and easy Star Wars Legion terrain bases. The woodland base you see here is covered in that video. Link in the description and above. There you have it guys, the Imperial Gav Tank, one of my favorite models to paint. I appreciate those of you that have stuck with me through this channel, and let's look forward to building new content together. If you like what you saw, drop me a like and comment down below, and spread the word about the channel. Let's get things rocking. Until then guys, keep on creating.